There's not many toys that came out of the 1980s that are as iconic as the Masters of the Universe line by Mattel. To me, they're like the pinnacle of the 80s action figure. They spawn so much cool stuff. All the knockoffs and bootlegs in that 3.5 style that you know I love, they spawned all them. In fact, this year, we even created our own bootleg figure. Myself and Nima Studios put our heads together and we created something called Deflatron that's now in production in Hong Kong. So even that were all spawned from these classic toy lines and they all came from the Mattel Masters of the Universe line. So what Super 7 have done is they've got the Masters of the Universe license and they've started producing their own vintage series that are like complete homages to the original Masters of the Universe line but with their own twists and just bringing out figures that never existed before. So Nima Studios have sent me a nice big box of the brand new vintage series to look into so let's whip that box open and check what's inside. <laughs> So like I said, today's episode is sponsored by Nima Studios. That's nemastudios.com. They used to be called Flossed and Paradise, so if there's any confusion, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you know that I always said this show is sponsored by Flossed and Paradise. Well, it's still sponsored by them, but they've now changed the name to Nima Studios. And what makes them really special is that they're a UK-based company, but they get all the exclusive American toys that you can't get in England. They get them shipped over here so that you can buy them from them directly and don't get hit with any import charges. If you've been a toy collector like me for a long time, and you've been buying stuff from America, you'll know that you get hit with an import charge. It's like an extra £20 plus when your item arrives that you have to ring up the post office and pay that before you can even get your item. So they just eliminate all that. It's really cool. So if you head over to nemastudios.com, if you see anything you like and you buy it, make sure you let them know that Slime House sent you. So, as I said today, we're going to look at the Masters of the Universe Mattel toy line. I've got them all laid out, so let's get straight into them. So the first one I'm going to show you is this guy, Beastman. Now, if you know anything about Masters of the Universe and He-Man, you'll know that this guy is like Skeletor's boy. It's his right-hand man. He's always taking him on missions, and when they're trying to fuck shit up, he always takes Beastman with him. And what they've done with these figures is, when Mattel released the original Masters of the Universe line, the figures didn't actually look much like they did in the TV show. They did a bit. They looked enough like them for you to know who it is, but they didn't look exactly like they did in the cartoon. So what I've got here is the original Beastman figure by Mattel. And as you can see, it's a lot more realistic looking than this one. I'll get some nice close-up shots of them side by side and you'll be able to see just how different they actually are. But if you're a completist like me and you get the opportunity to have the original Beastman next to the one from the TV show, like, you just gotta do it. And it's really cool that they've released a, a line of figures that look exactly like they did in the animation because the original ones never look like their animated counterparts. So they've bridged that gap, got the license for Masters of the Universe and made their own versions of them that look exactly like they did in the Filmation TV show. So he's really cool. Very iconic image. To me, Beastman is one of the most iconic 80s figures of all time, especially of the Masters of the Universe line. Then we've got another figure that you'll recognise from the TV show. It's He-Man's right-hand woman. It's Teela. She's fucking awesome. She's some warrior woman. She's very fucking cool. And in the original series and the, the revamp series that they did after a few years ago in like 2006 or 8 or something like that, she was a fucking badass character. Now, you'll notice that she does look very different again to her 1980s counterpart because like I said with Beastman, the original 1980s counterpart didn't look like she did in the TV show. The toy... Is fucking iconic and I always love that cobra headdress she's got a cobra staff and the little shield this one has no cobra headdress does she have a shield she does have a shield and she has a sword but no cobra staff so very different some people might look at these and go where they're just the same as the old figures like they're really really not if you look at them they couldn't be any more different man the only thing that's really nice to see with both of them is they've got that hand like that Tila, Tila and the uh, evil Lynn had hands like this. Like I said, I do wish that she had that. I know she didn't have that cobra headdress in the original series, but it's fucking awesome. Anything that's like a cobra helmet, headdress, mask, anything that's a cobra is fucking awesome. They've also got the twisted waist. A lot of these figures have the twisted waist. I don't really like doing it anymore because it kind of like wears over time. But because these figures are brand new and just come out, you've got another 30, 40 years to worry about that thing not twisting anymore. So yeah, she's another really iconic figure from the line. Now, it wouldn't be complete having a line with Teela in it without having her dad. My G, the Man at Arms. So anybody that watches He-Man knows how much of a Don Man at Arms is. One thing that always used to get my goat, no cut, it's not even a pun intended because it's not a goatee, it's a moustache, but one of the things that really used to wind me up watching the old show, like, 
as a kid getting wound up watching this show is that the figure of man at arms stash to me he needed that magnum pi mustache that's like what made him a character in the show like that that was what i liked about him he had this like old traditional like english mustache um and the figure never had it to me the figure always just looked like a random attorney and guard whereas the new one that they've released does have the mustache check that shit so if you put them next to each other the original 1980s mattel figure and this one they're not that much different but it's just a little bit more simple armor the armor on all these is a little bit more simple and it's one of the things that i i love and hate about them because i don't like how the original armor was more detailed but that wasn't as inclined with the tv show as this was so again like i said they're just bridging that gap so that you can if you're a completist like me and you want both of them you can have the nice realistic not realistic but the more detailed sculpt on the 80s one and then you can have this one the more filmation style you notice that the old figure only had one piece of arm armor arm armor uh, and the new one has both as armor on both sides so again much more in the filmation style it does say as seen on tv of all of these so i keep saying in the filmation style but it does say it on the box and that's the whole point of this line so the next figure that we're going to look at is one that we never actually got a 1980s counterpart of this figure appeared in like one random scene in the tv show where there was like a decoy he-man and it's this guy robot he-man so when i opened this box i took a quick picture before i started filming and i put it on my social media and everyone was everyone's been saying like who's that guy who's the robot face guy i don't remember robot he-man and you won't do because they never did a toy of him but check that he's fucking bizarre it almost looks like one of the jamie summers fembots from um the bionic woman or like a t-800 terminator or even in bill and ted when they've in bill and ted bogus journey when they've got the evil bill and ted and they got and pull their mouths open and they've got those like crazy mechanical robot heads underneath it's all that style it's all that 70s 80s robot style like westworld they loved robot decoys of people back then and i still love them now but check that it looks fucking weird with uh, with he-man's weird hair i never got on with he-man's hair it's always a very strange haircut to me i'm all for a weird haircut people have seen my haircut and uh, and i don't have the most traditional haircut in the world but check that shit it looks crazy and it looks even more weird with that with that mask but i think if i had to pick out of these four that i've showed you one that i was gonna like if i had to choose just one it's gotta be that one just because of how fucking bizarre it is and the fact it's got a robot head so he's really cool now the next one that we're gonna look at these are from a line called the powers of gray skull and something that i love is that when we get like a release of a figure that never came out in the 1980s so when he-man was like on its last legs when it was going out when it was not as popular anymore they was going to revamp the whole series and create something called the powers of gray skull and if if masters of the universe took place in eternia this was going to take place in a place called preternia and if you look at the back of the figure first of all you've got some that they did actually actually release you've got Bi bionatops which is a triceratops tyrannitasaurus and turbodactyl and these three did actually come out but you don't see them very often especially in england but you've got like dinosaurs so it was going to take place in preternia which was like a prehistoric version of eternia and okay i'll show you the main guy first that it was all going to revolve around this guy hero and he's the most powerful wizard in the universe if you've got he-man who is the most powerful man in the universe this is the most powerful wizard in the universe and he was going to like kick off a whole new series that just never happened so all these years later like 30 40 years later they've re-released these figures and we can now get hold of them and look at that fucking artwork now i didn't open any of the boxes on these ones when i reviewed the first wave of these figures the wave that come before these i opened them all i was very careful i opened them with a razor and i took them out and got nice close-up shots for you i'm not going to do that this time because i just instantly regretted it but there's no way i'd be opening that one because that card art's fucking awesome look at the skull behind him and the mad neon glow i love that green toxic like evil glowing shit it always reminds me of like mortal kombat skulls that are like glowing with green fucking smoke and neon and uh, and very much he-man as well you got scare glow and those kind of people and the slime pit and all that shit i love that eight is toxic neon glow shit and this card is no exception and look how cool he is he's got like mad gold armor very much like uh, the power punch he-man and the uh, battle damage figures that they released later on where these guys had armor and he's got armor but it's like gold it looks gold plated almost and then his weapon was going to be this fucking crazy thing the staff what's it called the staff of light is it what the, the staff magically opens i wonder what you call this weapon 
the staff of transformation channels the energy drawn by Eldor's book of living spells. So yeah, I don't know where they came up with that bizarre thing, but he's got a staff and it opens up and there's like a green glowing orb in it. Again, like keeping with the tradition of the green glowy toxic neon shit. This, this just looks like something that just should have been released and it's weird that it never did and unfortunate that it never did but it's fortunate that we now get to have it re-released all these years later. There's only one thing that I don't like about this toy and it's so fucking pathetic and petty but the staff has been covered in like speckled spray paint like when you've got a can of spray and you go t -t 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 and just dust it and to me that's not Mattel He-Man. Now I don't know if they was originally going to do that with the figures when they released it and they wanted to like make them more modern because to me that's more of like a toxic crusaders trait toys that came out years after these guys but um yeah it doesn't seem like a very Mattel trait to have something that's like speckled it's more as I said like a more of a 90s toy like gross out toy or like a designer toy. But um, if that's the only qualm I've got with the figure, then that's not a bad thing at all. And then finally, we've got this guy, Eldor. And he has something called the Book of Living Spells. Is that right? The Book of Living Spells. Yeah, so inside, if, I, if what I'm looking at is right on the back of the card, it has like some little pieces of paper that actually slot inside the book and it opens. So you peel off the adhesive back of Tyrannosaurus Rex sticker and Bionatops picture and match them to corresponding engravings as shown. Okay, so yeah, it has like pieces of paper, like stickers inside and the book's massive. You can see the book is like almost the full length of the card. So he's really fucking cool as well and he's like some hench old Obi-Wan Kenobi looking like Jedi wizard guy. So it's crazy that back in the day we never got these and now Super 7 have sorted that out and we get to have them. It's just, it's just mental that we had to wait all these years for them. So they're, they're by far my favourite out of all of them. That I love that big fucking card art. All the others have got that like smaller card. And then he's got like a really big one. It's almost the size of like a vinyl, a vinyl um, cover. So let's just go through one from the start. So we've got from the beginning, the first one we looked at, we got Beastman. Really fucking awesome. Like I said, m much more... All the first four that I showed you are, are much less detailed than their original 1980s counterparts, but they're still fucking cool. I still prefer the original 80s, obviously, because they're the ones that I grew up with. When I think of Beastman, that's what I think of. And when I think of 80s toys, Beastman's one of the first ones that comes to mind. But he's still really fucking cool, and he's got his original armor like that. You got the, um, like, it's like fur armor that goes around his chest, and then these armbands on each arm with the horns on very cool oh i forgot to mention as well they all come with a little mini comic as well like the old figures did i'd be interested to see what's inside that mini comic because uh, like i said i've not opened them but i wonder is it a mini comic or is it just a piece of card oh no i tell a lie it's just a piece of card it's just a piece of card that comes with them it's not a mini comic so we've got tila and then we've got her dad man at arms they're a nice pair to have together little little uh, father and daughter kill squad and then this guy, the weirdest one in my opinion, Robot He-Man. Fucking weird. And then, of course, these two guys. The OGs that never was and now are. Hero and Eldor. Fucking awesome. If you want to see us re review more toys, just subscribe to the channel. I said, us, it's me. I've got a whole crew of people that I run Slime House with, but I'm the only one in this country that's into toys, so I have to sit and review these on my own. So if you want to see and watch me review toys on my own, <laughs> then subscribe to this channel. There's tons on here. We've been getting sponsored by Flost and Paradise slash Nima Studios for over a year now, and every week they send me a box of stuff to look at. And, uh, and yeah, we've reviewed some really crazy stuff on this channel. All like the new Super 7 and that kind of thing. And like I said, they're the best place to go to in England if you're wanting to get like American exclusives and not get hit with the import charge. They're fucking awesome. So head over to nemastudios.com. <laughs> I'm choking. So head over to nemastudios.com. Have a look at all the stuff they've got on offer. And if you do buy something for yourself, remember to let them know that Slime House sent you. I'm Theo Kane. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Or if you want to see me toy hunting. Because I go toy hunting all over the world. I just dropped a whole series of toy hunting in Tokyo. Uh, then we went to Paris and I went to Lulu Baloo and did a load of toy hunting there. We've also got a feature film coming out called Unit 11. Myself and my crew. If I can just get this hair out my eyeball. There's an hair in my eyeball. Myself and my crew, uh, we spent years and years creating our own action-adventure feature film called Unit 11. You can see the trailer for that movie on here, some exclusive clips. And then every week we've been dropping something called The Debrief, where we talk about guerrilla filmmaking and all the like trials and tribulations that we had to deal with while creating our very own feature film, Unit 11. And then a ton of other cool stuff on there as well. 
You can also get us on facebook.com forward slash Slimehouse TV and we're on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV if you want to throw us a couple of quid each month and help us keep the lights on. For now, this is all figured out. I'm Theo Kane and we'll catch you in the next one. But for now, I'm gone. Boom.